NASA confirmed this space explosion is the biggest threat to Earth. Black holes have been studied for the greater part of a century, but despite this, there are still many questions that remain unsolved. And despite this, there have been a lot of conversation about them in recent months and years. A black hole's gravitational pull is so powerful that light cannot escape it, and it appears that the secrets of black holes are no different. Detecting gravitational waves for the first time in early 2016 meant that two black holes had collided somewhere in the furthest reaches of the cosmos. This amazing discovery was achieved by scientists. We now know a lot more about space, gravity, and how the cosmos came into being thanks to this article which made international news. So, with all the excitement around black holes, it makes sense that people would want to know the dramatic details But what happens when black holes collide. Hey guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today, we'll be taking a look at what NASA is claiming is the biggest threat to Earth. Make sure to stick till the end of this video, as we have a lot to cover. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video. It helps us a long way. Black holes are the remains of dead stars that have collapsed in on themselves, leaving these terrifyingly dense black holes that float menacingly in the centers of galaxies, consuming more and more stuff and expanding in size and power. The ultimate galactic showdown between two black holes would occur if they collided, but since nothing can escape a black hole's grasp after it passes its event horizon, also known as the point of no return, it is unclear what will actually happen when these two enormous entities collide. According to theories, when two black holes start to interact gravitationally, they will start to orbit one another and close in on one another in an ever tighter spiral. The two black holes will eventually combine into a single larger black hole, but this merger would release a huge quantity of energy. Black holes are frequently more than 100 million times as large as the sun and spin at speeds that are extremely high, one-third to half the speed of light in some situations. As a result, a competing idea contends that the two black holes' rapid spin may cause them to adversely interact and recoil from one another. Any black hole is surrounded by enormous clouds of magnetized gas, and once the powerful magnetic and gravitational fields of the two black holes start to interact, they will create a funnel-shaped vortex above the black hole's accretion disk. The two black holes may be orbiting at speeds up to half the speed of light during the last stages of the collision before coming together in a powerful energy explosion that can be felt throughout the whole cosmos. The loss of orbital energy and the eventual merger of the two black holes are caused by the discharge of a significant number of gravitational waves during black hole collisions, which is what we do know. When two black holes collide, gravitational waves are produced that ripple through spacetime as a result of the flash that is sent forth. Highly sensitive astronomical devices such as those at the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO, a pair of astronomical instruments situated in Washington and Louisiana in the United States, can detect these unusual waves. The collision of two black holes, which occurred around 1.3 billion light years away, led to the first gravitational wave detection that was confirmed by the LIGO team in the early months of 2016. The very first plants were growing on Earth at that time, about 650 million years before the first creatures appeared on our planet. Thus, it follows that those two black holes collided at the same time. It has taken so long for those gravitational waves to reach Earth and be noticed by people after traveling across the vastness of space. Around the globe, additional LIGO-like equipment is already being constructed, and these will enable us to determine the precise locations of future black hole collisions. Our understanding of the nature of the universe and the reasons behind some of the most enigmatic and terrifying occurrences in our universe will be further illuminated by this new preoccupation with black hole research. And let's take a look at how the LIGO experiment works. The mysterious ripples in space-time known as gravitational waves move at the speed of light throughout our cosmos. Several experiments have been looking for them, predicted by Einstein exactly 100 years ago. One of these experiments, LIGO, has attracted a lot of attention. But how exactly does it operate and how reliable is it? The violent collisions of big dense objects like neutron stars and black holes that give rise to gravitational waves are known as astrophysical events. Despite being apocalyptic in nature, the events that give rise to them are so far away that they have only a very slight impact on our planet's local fabric of space and time. Therefore, in order to look for them, scientists had to create enormous, incredibly sensitive optical devices known as laser interferometers. 
Over 1,000 researchers from 86 universities across the globe were involved in the Laser Interferometric Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO, which unites these initiatives in an experiment. Two light beams traveling between pairs of mirrors through pipes going in opposite directions, let's say north and west, are all you need to make a gravitational wave interferometer. Space should be stretched in one direction by the impact of a gravitational wave and contracted in the opposite direction. As a result, the mirrors would move somewhat in the Earth's gravitational field, causing one set of mirrors to be farther apart from the other than it is now. It's remarkable how the mirrors are actually reacting to how space-time is being stretched and compressed as they swing. Like the waves in a pond, it is quite similar. A floating object that has been set down will repeatedly rise and fall when a wave passes past it. The motions of LIGO's mirrors vary from place to place in a distinctive fashion because they are bobbing in a pond of gravitational waves despite being more complex. The laser light returning from the two interferometer arms can then be monitored by a detector, which can detect even small variations in distance. We have two of these devices, place them at opposite ends of the U.S., and ask them to perform the identical dancing mirror's action simultaneously. One is in Livingston, Louisiana, and the other is in Hanford, Washington. This is done to make sure it wasn't a fluke. So how does it work in real life? A crucial challenge is locking the interferometers, which entails stabilizing the distances between the mirror so that the laser light resonates as intended between the mirror surfaces. Adjusting the mirrors is a daily chore because their positions and angles tend to slowly wander as a result of temperature changes, mechanical flexing of the hardware, and even the position of the moon in the sky. In order to determine the root of a detector's malfunction and take appropriate action, scientists and engineers on site also keep track of diagnostic data about the detector and the surrounding environment. Developed specifically for the detectors, LIGO's dripping with technological advancements. It was necessary to account for the Earth's curvature when building the 4-kilometer-long interferometer arms. To prevent dust and gas from distorting the laser light between the mirrors, each detector needs to be perfectly separated from ground vibrations and placed in a vacuum. For months at a time, the two detectors must collect data while never missing a single data point or falling behind. This is a technological difficulty in and of itself when your detector is spread out over a number of kilometers. Being a member of LIGO is fascinating because it is one of the most complex machines ever built and a marvel of engineering and physics. And that's going to end today's episode. We certainly hope you enjoyed our video today. Please make sure you subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you're always notified of our latest uploads as soon as we have them on our channel. We also would appreciate if you would leave a comment down below your own thoughts. And make sure you like today's video and share it with all your friends and family and fellow fans of the cosmos in your inner circle who will enjoy our video. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.